Well, all right, guys. Welcome back. Got another scrim going to be going on here right now. And, uh, well, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, no! Why did I just clear that? Oh, no. That was, that was an actual disaster. Well, I can tell you this right now. Uh, Prisoner 945 was the first ban. Right? Right? I'm pretty sure Prisoner 945 was the first ban coming out from Slicks, which means that the second ban was... In fact, uh, Warbeast coming out from Temp or uh, Hanskin. Six so choosing to get rid of Pebbles, and then of course the last ban there was Engineer. So Scout being your first overall pick here between TMSR and Lions once more. I'm still trying to run down a co-caster. Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah, maybe. Not quite sure about that, but that is, in fact, uh, I'm trying to see if Pantney wants to cast, because I know he, and I know he was here like 30 seconds ago, but he's not responding to me. Right? But he's gone. I don't know. Pantney's not responding to me now. What a jerk. Everybody spam Pantney with, what a jerk. Shout out to, to Jory. I don't know how to spell that pronounce it or anything anyway take a look one more time scout was the first pick tempest to overall second uh tmsr could be valuing that rally in the uh third overall pick trying to grab their initiation or possibly suicide probably going to be an initiator there most likely because they have that scout who just fits so well into that suicide role to begin with and then they grab an ophelia as well so they get to see who's going to be doing the jungling whether it's going to be tank fet or moon meander uh, here on the TMSR side of things. Lions on the other side did go with a Lodestone pick as well as a Wretched Hag. So two heroes that they're very comfortable with. With uh, Jonas and Van playing a lot of the Wretched Hag. And then of course Lodestone going to be played. Wait, hold on a second. Normally Flensmeister plays the Wretched Hag. And then Lodestone is played by Jonas and Van. Jonas will sometimes play the Hag, but he can't play both. Which means that this will probably be a Nox Wretched Hag going to be filling in here for the carry roll. And I'm going to go ahead and get Panny on the horn. And hope that he's not too loud right off the bat. Uh, Panny Panderson? Uh oh. Where's Panny? Hello? There's Panny. Hey, it's me. Hey, it's you, Panny. What's up, dude? Oh, not too much. How are you, Penny? Okay, man, just got home. Um, you know, relaxing. Watching some scrims. Chillaxing. Maxing out. Chillaxing to the max. There you go. Well, yeah. I, uh, I'm good. I'm doing good, Penny. Thank you for asking. Casting some scrims, and I like casting scrims. Do you like casting scrims? I love casting scrims. Dude, casting scrims is the best. Now, what's the deal over here with Nox? Do you know, is he just filling in today? Or is he actually trying out for this Lion's Fifth? Okay, so I asked Pew the same question. And then Pew's like, you should ask Nox. So I asked Nox, and he said he's just ringing. But I think if he was trying out, he wouldn't say anyway. Interesting. But, you know, I, I'm assuming that he's just ringing because Team Excellent is number two team in the world, of course. Interesting. Panny, you're really quiet, and I'm trying to... I am. Okay, let me see. Hold on a second. I might be able to fix this from my side. Okay. Uh, I can. There we go. Okay. Oh, my God. Now you're yeah, really oh, loud. Oh, sorry. I oh, cut off, Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, oh, my hold Jesus. on. Now i got to turn you back down again. Uh, okay. Let's... Okay. There we go. Sorry. <gasps> normally, I have Hello. Skype that... Uh, normally, I set this all up before, but... I didn't have a co-caster, so Penny, I think you should be good now. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, you know, about what we were saying about Team Excellent, I mean, look, it, they're, like, looking for a scrim right now, so. Interesting. Mm. Drama? I I hope not, because... I hope know. so. Really? No. Okay, no, maybe not. No. Drama's fun sometimes, but not, not all the time. We had plenty of drama like two weekends ago, and I'm really enjoying the the not drama right now. I always check the forums if I want any answers, but don't say anything right now. Uh, how about this whole TMSR thing? The whole TMSR I mean, like, thing? Is, okay, is, is, okay. Is I, I just got 
confirmation from Lions manager Papa Bjorn that Knox is just ringing. Okay. Yeah. Well, Team Excellent is scrimming right now, so I don't know. Wow. Or they were looking for scrimming. I don't know. I th- I'm not sure. Anyway, um, what do I think about this TMSR thing or the team? Like, like, do you think like it's like it's like Tank if had a new player? Uh, I don't know. You were ringing for them like two days ago, weren't you? Yeah, but my information is classified. Oh well, let's let's just bring something up and then say I can't talk about it. Great job, Penny. <laughs> I just want to have your opinion on it. That's all. I, I think Tankafet's a fantastic support and jungle player. And if Fitzky is leaving the team, which his presence or lack thereof over the last few days seems to indicate, then uh, I think Tankafet could be a, a real solid addition to this team. Do you think it's like a, like another situation where like Pewee and like Flynn is like similar skill level, but like maybe it will just start clicking now? Uh, it's possible. Do you really think Fitzky was the... I, I don't think that... I think that TMSR and Lions' problems were different, though. I think Lions were having, like, internal, like, arguing issues and stuff. And I think TMSR, they just have, like, no central leadership. But I don't know. That's just kind of the way that I feel. And I think that most... The way that a lot of people are feeling... Not sure. We'll see what the uh, what the deal is later on. Okay, they were making now, so Pewie's here. So, yeah, nope, nope, no drama. No drama. I love not having drama. It's pretty much the best. It's, it's alright, I mean, depending on the day. Panny, how's Team Afraid going? The, the, team Afraid is not really a team. What? It's like it's like me and Fibeli, like playing with Jolom, even though he's not even playing Han, really. But And then, like... Well, now Tank of it left. Like when Tank of it leaves me, every time Tank of it leaves me, I just, I just, like, like go really emo. Yeah. So like, if Tank of it's gonna be leaving me again, then I don't know what I'm gonna do with well, my life. Well, do you know that Tank of it's leaving? I mean, I, it's not confirmed, but I mean, he's he's playing with them. Can you confirm or deny that Tank of it is leaving? I think you can assume. An assumption is the best. Uh, no assumptions. Uh, make no, an I know. I don't think like even animal. if I was. To be honest, I, like, I I think that Tankafet would if like Fitzke is leaving. I think Tankafet's the best bet, yeah. but I don't think I think he's still trying out. Okay. Um, but then again, like if you remember the whole thing before, um, before Team SR even got Slicks or so even got uh, Fitzke and Shams, yeah. Tankafet was also trying out then. It's true. And he also did extremely well for them. It's true. So maybe they already have their minds made up. I don't know. I don't know. People in chat are saying that TMSR Tank Effect confirmed on KZU stream. Uh, well, yep. They might just be doing that to get answers, though. So. Or are they saying that Fitzky's leaving confirmed? I don't know, guys. Like, people probably assume that I have all this like backroom information and stuff, and well, it's I don't. It's honestly pretty obvious that Fitzky's leaving because KZU confirmed that somebody's leaving from TMSR. Yeah. So I mean, if like. <laughs> If obviously if whoever's not going to be playing with these past couple of days aren't here, then yeah, I mean, like it's pretty obvious that Pitsky is probably going to leave. I don't know. Um, last, but as for the new, last time that I asked Keizu about if somebody was leaving the team, which I think was two days ago, he could neither confirm nor deny that somebody was leaving. And I'm not even just saying that; like he he actually said we have to talk about it. So I don't think anything's confirmed, man. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, that's just what that's what I found the forums that because you confirmed that. Well, but yeah, I mean, what else has been again, posted? It's the forums. Yeah, what else has been posted on the forums last two days? Cakes is the new Honcast co-caster. Is Zefri <laughs> gay? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know about the forums, man. I didn't see the Zefri gay thing. <laughs> really? Oh, I missed. I missed that one. <laughs> like, I saw. I saw the whole cakes thing, but oh no, it's it's great. The forums are. The forums are way better than TMZ. <laughs> Best thing that ever existed. It really is. Whenever you want some entertainment, you just go there. Same. Panny, I'm looking at your Skype picture right now, and you've changed it from the one where it was just you without a shirt, and now it's you without a shirt and a dog wearing your Siberia neckbands. Um, yeah, how does it make you feel? Well, I like your dog. Your dog is, what is that, a Cocker Spaniel? 
It's King Charles. It's a it's a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. Correct. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, I used to used to be like something with. Didn't you used to um, study something with animals? Yes. Or vets. I, yeah, I remember that. I am an animal scientist. I went to school to be a vet. But I remember this. Yeah. I'm taking some time off to be an esports caster and an esports person. Um, he looks kind of big to be a King Charles. Uh, no, he's pretty small. Okay. I well, don't know. Maybe it's just a picture. Yeah, maybe it's just a picture. Or maybe you're He's really actually small. sick right now, too. Like, so. Oh, pobrecito. Hopefully he'll get better, yeah. Oh, no. Time will tell. But you know what? I'm going to make him proud by casting with beef. There you go. So he can watch me. There you go. Oh, I'm pretty sure I just cut my toe. That's, that's oh, it's, it's normal. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I just I play with pocket knives while I'm casting. Like, th- I, I, here's here's some backroom information for you guys. Like, most casters have something they're doing while casting that like occupies them. Like, you have a tick. Like, I sit here and I play with a pocket knife. Breaky shuffles a deck of cards. That's actively a thing. Like, it's pretty fun. I, so. I see how it can like it helps. I don't know. It's I, just, I usually kick something under my desk. So yeah, or I, yeah, there, there's it's just things that you do sometimes. Um, anyway, even players have something. Yeah, but games. Yep, Pee Wee is up. here now, and so we're gonna be getting this one started. So I want to get your take on this weekend. You uh, you saw Lions? Did you, did you watch the uh, SG versus Lions match? Um, I think I was playing during some of it. But I watched like live. I watched game three. Okay. Um, I mean, but I I heard about the whole thing while I was playing, obviously. Yeah. But um, and I went back and I watched a fifteen minute concede or sixteen minute. I think it was. Uh yeah, game uh, one was game like an eighteen four. minute concede or something like that. Um, looks like we are just going to be doing the AP thing here. So let's actually talk about these teams here. Uh, TMSR ended up going with the Dampier as well as Torture for the last two picks. I, what do you think? TMSR trying to run the excellent Dampier. Um, I mean, I like the hero. just provides a lot of bursts in general. Um, he's one of those heroes who can carry super, super hard, but also just destroy and annihilate somebody in a matter of seconds. Um, and on top of that, they already have scouts to carry late game as well. So I, I like the decision by going Dampier with a hero who also can carry with him because I don't feel like he's the best carry late game. I feel like he can get out carried by heroes you know, such as Mage Bane, Dark Lady, etc. So picking scouts is always a safe pick. Um, on top of that, they have Rally as well. So I think just the synergy with Dampier in this team um, is going to be built around himself and uh, scout as well. So I like it. I like the pick. And the hero in general, I mean, in any lineup, he works very nicely. Oh, very cool. Um, Panny, I've got to forward to you some information here from Papa Bjorn, who says that he loved your lion's rap. I tell him I love him as well, even though he didn't say he loved me. But, you know, it's okay. There you go. I know, I know. Hans can also loved it a lot. He used to talk uh, to me. We, yeah. we watched it in the Honcast office. I happened to you told have, me, yeah. have your stream open, and it was great. Everybody was just like tuning in. Yeah, and then we made Ace Jr. Against. watch it later that day. And, and he's like, oh, I can do better than this guy. Yeah. He said that he helped you write it or something. Or like you sent it to him um, to look over. Yeah, I think I sent it to him to look over. There you go. Got to get some help from the professionals every now and again. But uh, yeah, the damp here with the scout there, you said that you felt that that was pretty solid. On the other side of things, Lions, they've got an extremely aggressive lineup. Jonas and Fan is, in fact, playing the Wretched Hag in the Suicide Lane. And then KGE is going to be playing Lodestone Middle rather than a Suicide. So this is going to be an interesting lane going up against a Rally. I don't know about the uh, kill potential here from Rally and Luna, or excuse me, uh, Lodestone and Luna versus Rally. Yeah, um, I think they're... Ex- I'm not, I don't know if they're expecting... I'm not really sure. I mean, you should expect a Rally, um, to be honest, mid... You shouldn't expect a Dampier. Dampier is always going to be bottom. Um, taking a look at the other lanes, they got Hag, Bubbles. So, hmm. I, I'd, I'd prefer to see Hag mid against Rally, 100%. But I guess they assume that Hag or Bubbles, whoever it is, is going to get trashed by Rally plus Torture. So they're doing this so they can kind of win mid, which they are going to win mid now regardless because it's a 1v1 or 1v2. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that doesn't really matter, to be honest. I mean, Slick's like... 
heroes like Rally, like Tundra, especially these tanky heroes who just need level six to do so much uh, for the team. Like it doesn't matter how much farm they get; it just matters how much experience they get. And you can't really stop somebody from getting a lot of experience mid because it's a smaller lane, um, and they can always leech at some point. And mm -hmm. Slicks is even stacking as well, so. He's going to do, you know, I, I think it's fine. I like the decision from TMSR putting a solo rally mid, and I think it's kind of a mistake from Lions. Yeah. Um, and maybe just them assuming that they're going to do a lane mid, which is, you know, reasonable. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you could throw Aluna uh, up into that top lane and allow her to try to stack and pull, get experience and uh, some gold from that way. And I think that that might be your best option, but... At the same time, Scout is a very good hero at dealing with that. He's going to be able to get in there, get some last hits. He's going to be able to easily block out camps with those electric guys. So not exactly sure where the Aluna could go right now. Can't really lane again, dual lane against that Scout. Can't really go into, and soak the experience from Wretched Hag in the bottom lane. It's just kind of an awkward position right now for uh, Lions and their laning. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen Lions do a couple of um, times actually before I speak initiation mid actually Luna gonna yeah, be probably be full. They are gonna be going on her now. The rocket drill goes out, not gonna be enough damage, and Lodestone has to run away as well. Really good gank set up there from Tankafet, and I had mentioned at the beginning of the game that uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to be Moon or Tankafet playing the jungler here, but in fact Tankafet coming on in, and Tankafet's mouse stopped working. Speaking of hardware, yeah, it happens a lot. Speaking of hardware, Pandy, did you ever get that new mic? Yeah, I'm. Oh, I switched to it like in the middle of me speaking. Now I'm using it right now, but um, I haven't really like configured it at all. I don't know if I, I can, but okay. I'm using that one like as for the past minute now because I see people in chat aren't very happy apparently. Nice. No, it, um, it sounds pretty good. It's a little bit loud, maybe. Might need to turn the game down on a bit. There should be a. I can, put it, I can, I can just feel yeah, yeah, I see the game button. I can just move away. I'm pretty close to it. That's why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, for the by the way, for the whole tank effect moon thing, I, I think the tank effect is much more comfortable in the jungle. He's been playing it for a bit longer than Moon, and uh, he, like uh, heroes like Ophelia, like as good as you are at microing, you still have to understand the hero very well, and you still have to constantly farm. So I like the choice, but and tank effect knows how to do that. So I like the fact that they're um, putting tank effect on Ophelia, and probably Tempest as well. I think that Moon might even transition into the. Um, hard support role if Tank of is staying in the team. I, yeah, I gotta agree with you that that will likely be the case, and that's gonna make a few thousand sad Moonies, really. Like, they want to <laughs> see him making the big plays, and you don't really make the big plays when you're playing a Glacius or something. I mean, you can, but certainly not uh, quite the case as if you were a Tundra or a Bubbles or, you know. Something along those lines. Yeah, um, but uh, the nice thing about being a support player, at least from my experience, um, and I'm obviously very comfortable with the role, but um, once you kind of get down support as a role and you you calm down kind of how you play and you get you get like all the, the stuff down and you need to get down, it's very easy to lead a team and it's very easy to make a lot of calls because you're not focusing on last hitting um, like every other role pretty much in this game. So. Um, when you're when you're hard support, there's times in the game where you won't be doing too much, and it will give you the opportunity to kind of lead your team. And that's kind of the player that Moon is. Moon's a player that is very smart, and knowledgeable, and he's able to make a lot of calls. So I think that if he plays hard support, it's actually going to enable him to um, be a bit of a more of a leader for the team as well and make those calls that need to be made um, during laning phase. There you go. Very important indeed. Uh, getting your. I think that I. I feel like the jungler role is the most popular for the captain. Yeah, most popular, have probably, I mean, um, Hanskin. Insania, Pew. Insania, Pew, yeah. Pew kind of plays both, but um, even Tank, if it, when, when we were with, yeah, um, Tank if it was also the leader and he was a yeah. jungler. Yeah, I, I think it's, I don't know why it's like that, um, but, yeah. you know, it works out for those teams, so. Why not? I, I guess the jungling role is just the, the best because um, you can you can put more of a game plan down, and the first couple of minutes you're not focusing on anything really. But like I said, I mean, with support, unless you're dual mid to support, you're not going to be very um, occupied the whole time. Like only only real mid supports kind of have to every single second be aware of ganks and yeah. uh, etc. But 
um, you know, I, any role can lead. It just, it just I'm just saying that um, in my experience that support is a bit easier or jungle just because of the fact that you have a bit more free time and free space. There you go. But right now, getting back into this one, TMSR with a slight resource advantage about five minutes into the game. Tank Effect doing a really nice job on Ophelia, has hit level five now, focusing on uh, not only the jungle, but also making sure to get that one kill in the middle lane, helping to set up the Bloodlust. And what's up? No, uh, Kethy just came and stole the Minotaur from Tempest no. when he was farming with Elementals, so nice catch by him. Kethy's He's jerk. actually doing very well. Yeah. 275 much better than gold per minute I <clears throat> I think Scout did have a substantial amount of stacked regen at least one extra set but might have even been two the yeah, sender pointed out that it might have been two I wasn't paying attention but um yeah it's, it's very interesting the, the lines line up just because there's so much AoE there's not much late um but uh, you know with the, the new Grimoire release um the item release, it, it's, it allows bubbles to carry games, so that's why I assume Pewee's playing it and why they trust in the bubbles, but I mean, if you are gonna, if you think about late game, definitely going to be in favor of TMSR, no doubt. Um, and even, you know, a mid game will kind of be interesting, as whichever team wins right now is going to win mid game, and TMSR has a slight lead, not really too um, huge, but um, the next little fights, I don't know, I, I'm assuming Lions is going to set something up very soon. So I think if that goes well, um, we'll have a nice time going into mid-game as well. But they're pushing towers now. They don't really care about anything else. Yeah, Lions wants to get that influx of gold. They want to get that map control as well. And double damage Tempest up top, making relatively quick work of this defensive tower. But absolutely no chance this one's going to drop before TMSR makes some kind of a response. Four players in the middle lane, though. Bubbles walking right by the Ward of Revelation. Really Look nice at that job. actually Ward from Moon, yeah. Or ward of us, really nice and Lodestone going in, but isn't able to find anything. Bubbles is there as well, not going to choose to use the kelp field. So this tower might be in some trouble, but at least not giving up any kills. Yep, yeah, um, the real nice ward by Moon. I mean, there you go. I mean, Moon knows a lot about the game, so he knows where to place wards, and that pretty much saved him as well as um, Rally in that situation. Um, now Tinkerpet and um, the Hexer are going to be doing a bit of pushing at the well bottom. Tinkerpet has two creeps now, they're going to go for this tower. Hag is here, going to attempt to deny right now, but they're going to actually be jumping him. He's going to fall, yeah. so a bit of a question to play by Jonas. Um, <clears throat> not really sure why he played so aggressive. I mean, he should have thought there with Skeleton, but sadly he did not. Mid, back to mid over here, they're going to be pushing it as well. So Yeah, so trying to take on that tower. And yep. Oh. Will go down. That was really close to a deny from Moon. Yeah, but um, so they're not gonna get it. It's fine though. I mean, um, TMSR pretty much what their what their game plan is and what the point or what they should be doing right now is just not dying, um, and farming up on Dampier, and out farming the opponents if they can. But the best thing they can do is just avoid fighting, and that's what they did right there. They they gave the tower up, and actually Lotus is gonna be charging his ultimate mid right now. Trying to try Honestly, to get it, and rally. well, it's going to get a lot of damage done, but now going to get turned around on and killed. Really well played there by Moonmeander, making sure to cover his teammate, and uh, Slick's taking advantage of that lowered armor, lowered resistances there from Lodestone. They're able to turn that one around and get a kill. So, TMSR looking pretty good here, nine minutes into this game with that resource advantage, and they definitely got the momentum. Yeah, um, I'm not really sure why Super KG did that i feel like like i'm not a very good lodestone player i don't plan that much but just judging by a lodestone going on a rally i didn't think that he was going to get the kill anyway he probably would have obviously if ophelia didn't heal um but yeah nice reactions anyway coming out from tank of fed as well as moon man they're just kind of waiting over there setting it up and now they're going to try to step another two kills bottom in the meantime or top as jonas falls bottom though yeah, Jonas going down one more time in the bottom lane. There's the electric eye science going on up top. Seismic Slam not going to connect here. Tempest getting the glacial blast off and then going to be retreating. So they get the tower, they get out clean. Unfortunately, losing Jonas once again in the bottom lane, but eh, it's probably worth it. Now Dampier in some trouble down here. One more auto going to be going out, but should be able to get the portal key off before the next auto is there. And Hax runs out of there. 
Yeah, actually pretty interesting. I've never seen a Dampier go straight in portal key. Um, <clears throat> usually you see the, um, what is it called? I'm blanking out. Grimoire. Um, the, yeah, the light brand really early on. Um, like right now, pretty much. But uh, portal key is obviously not bad. It just doesn't give him the ability to farm as fast. So maybe it might be hinting at um, Haxorn playing a bit more aggressive early on. And that might be due to the fact that they have Ophelia on the same team. So um, maybe they might be looking to push some more towers and have a bit more of a mobile carry. Yeah, I'm um, going to make a bold prediction here and say that I like this. I mean, that maybe not a bold prediction, but uh, maybe an unconventional choice. I like this just because of that Ophelia pick, like you said. Going to be trying to get the initiations off when they are doing these tower pushes and feeling that going the full 4,800 gold into the Grimoire right off the bat, or 5,000 or however much it is, is just simply not the, the best choice, that there's going to be too much build-up time. And in this case, we'll be able to be more aggressive. Right now, Scout in some trouble up top. Uh, Ward of Revelation is down. There's going to be an element of Void with the Glacial Blast as well. Interrupted in a seismic same turnaround. Nice job from Slix helping out his good buddy Keizu. And they get the kill. TMSR now 5,000 experience up. They're in fantastic position. Yep. Um, nice play over there. And Slix just being in the right place at the right time, to be honest. Um, maybe he even knew that that was coming, but... Regardless, while that's happening, Dampier is just continuing to farm. Um, currently sitting at 440 gold per minute. I want to see if they're going to go for push right now. Tinkerfan has three creeps. He has good creeps as well. Two Minotaurs and one Skeleton King. And Scout's even down here. Um, Hacks are going to get another kill to Hag, and it's going to be a fight over here. Take it away, these. Yeah, TMSR going to be going hard. Aluna taking a lot of damage at the hands of Scout. Lodestone going to be getting out of there. Instead, just going to be nuking out some creeps, perhaps. Luna is going to survive for right now. Torture already going down. And now Scout going to be in a little bit of trouble. Bat Blast is going to go. Oh, gets him. Brings home that kill. And now Lodestone trying for one more. Is instead just going to bottle up a refreshment rune. Actually, that was a... Was that DD or refreshment? I don't... I don't recall. In either case, Lions comes out two for zero in that exchange. Yeah, um, I mean, what you notice now about Dampier um, as a hero is that he it's like a pebbles where he jumped in that fight, or before that fight started, he got a kill to Jonas and Fan. Then Jonas and Fan got back on Hag. Um, and Dampier didn't go in again because obviously he only has two skills available. He doesn't have his ultimates. Um, and he won't deal that much damage. And once he PKs in, he's probably not going to come back out alive unless his team is there to get his back. But oh, TP's nice play coming in down here. And Ooh. Dampier is going to not get that portal key off. Now, Tempest goes the wrong direction, gets locked down by the Minotaurs and the Skeleton Kings. Hag's there with the Sonar Scream, but it's not going to matter that much. Ophelia Ultimate could be going off, keeping her team topped off and allowing him to go hard once again. Bubbles, no shells there available. Needs to probably hit the Kelp Field here in a second. And not going to be... Oh, there's the Kelp Field with the take cover! Chain Reaction Shell going to be going in as well, but Aluna's going to be the one to fall here. Bubbles gets the Shell Surf away and will survive. So Aluna and Temp is going to be the casualties thus far. Are they really going for a Lodestone as well? He's got no Rocket Drill and is going to drop right now. The Minotaur stuns helping out. 3 for 0 this time for TMSR. Yeah, nice uh, kind of unexpected fight right there for coming out from TMSR. Lions kind of felt like they got a bit more space and honestly got a bit too comfortable after they got three kills. Didn't really realize that it's really early on in the game. It's only 14 minutes and death cooldowns are very, very short. So TMSR was able to get their people back, their players back mid uh tank effect setting up with nice creeps uh on ophelia he didn't lose them during that little fight up to, uh bottom and yeah they just got a nice kill they didn't get a tower off of that but like i said before i mean if they win early game they're set for late game and they don't really have to worry and it's 10 to 2 right now so they're doing a really good job of keeping lines down yeah doing a good job indeed and this is exactly what they need to be doing lions line up so aggressive not being able to find kills had to take the fifth death of the game Jonas and Fan is just being absolutely shut down by Dampier and Haxorn perhaps realizing that this hero does not need the Grimoire power to get consistent kills on heroes like this wretched hag, the Aluna, or the Bubbles. He simply needs that initiation early enough before they can get levels and Haxorn taking advantage of his level advantage and is able to get those consistent kills with his portal key. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Before I speak, actually, top lane over here, Bubble's going to get silenced. I don't think Slick's going to make it in range unless he pushes the scout, so he's going to do that. But he will be fine. Um, but uh, the nice thing about heroes like Hag, Bubble, Suicide, um, for Legion in this case, is that they're so squishy and they can't pull. 
um, you know, heroes like Wild Soul, like War Beast, um, who else? Um, Keeper of the Forest, that can pull early on at the same time as be super tanky. Um, it kind of changed the story. I don't know if Haxor would have got a PK if he was up against a different suicide because, the uh, and especially um, that Hellborn also has bubbles. I mean, this is a perfect situation for him to get those items just because of the fact that four out of the five players on Hellborn are under 1k HP right now. And that's just, that, that opens up him being able to farm off heroes instead of farm off creeps the whole game, yep. which he's able to do. And um, Jonas the fan just, yeah, not, not any farm right now. And I mean, if you take a look at Hellborn, he's really the only carry they have with the exception of Bubbles, who still needs, you know, portal key before he can be a bit more um, carryish and active in fights. Oh, gosh. Damp here has an invis and There's a word of revelation down for another 10 seconds, but Hacturin. Spider Sense is tingling, not wanting to walk over that one. And I, once again, I agree with exactly what you're saying there with the portal key. And now Dampier goes to the Grimoire Power next, knowing that this is going to be the item that allows him to continue farming and that's going to enable him to continue getting hero pickoffs later into this game. Right now, he is only about uh, 2,000 gold away from the Grimoire Power. So expect that probably by the 20 21 minute mark. And Haxion will just get crazier and crazier. Scout and damp here, double invis heading up top. They want this bubbles, man. This is this is, this is double trouble. Yeah, they're gonna run towards Tempest, so yeah, he's gonna fall. Oh yeah, in trouble. Down he goes. Nice use of the electric eye silence, making sure that no elemental void or anything would go off. And bubbles is trying to lock down damp here. We'll scout him out here, and Kelfield is going to be used. There's the red power throw as well, but Bubbles might die right now. Lodestone going to get the sun off. There's the silence as well, but now damp here in some trouble. Oh, the light brand! The light brand dot, and Haxion's trying to get away. Wretched Hag will drop the bat, but she gets turned around on from the flight as well as the terrorize. Now Lodestone comes in, does get the kill. But Scout should be able to get out of there as well. So Dampier makes his way into the top lane. Gets three kills. There's the push onto Aluna. Scout going to get two as well. Or one, at least. Making that four kills for the Legion team in that top lane. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if Lions feels like they can still win this game. I think they're just um, kind of waiting for a huge fight to come back from. But Dampier is just too strong. And that was a 2v5, pretty much. Um with Scout coming in just a couple of times, to be honest, it was more Dampier doing everything, um, getting a kill onto Hag, and yeah, the light brand, just the, the damage that it deals even after, um, like, bubbles of walking away still dies, and on top of that, a really nice heal from Ophelia, saving, saving Dampier, pretty much keeping him alive for just a couple more seconds, um, and allowing him to get just another pick off, and, um, you know, even though he died, he still got, what, I think around 700 gold, 600 gold from that um, exchange, so, well worth it, and, you know, Haxion is TPing mid, and they're just going to go fight again now. I mean, they're not spending any time farming. They want to just end this game right now. Um, actually, okay, it's going to go Ancients, but, um, I mean, with an Ophelia, um, you do have kind of have a time timeline that Ophelia kind of gets weaker as the game progresses, unless, of course, um, the rest of your team is honestly late game. But that's the nice thing about Dampier is that he works early, mid, and late, especially with the PK. So, yeah. they really have a lot of options at this point in the game. Pew really uh, considers this hero to be one of the best in the game, like crazy, crazy strong, and thinks that people really undervalue him. And uh, I kind of have to agree. If you can get past that first few minutes and get a decent start on Dampier and then really make sure that you don't overplay, uh, he really is just an incredibly strong hero. And hero players like Haxer and Nox, they like using him quite a bit. So one that's definitely on the up and up now. But TMSR going to continue to be aggressive, like you mentioned. And you brought up that Ophelia, and I feel like Tankafet has not been participating a lot. But at the same time, 3-0 3, 310 gold per minute. Tankafet, by the metrics here, is playing phenomenally. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Ophelia is that um, she can't just get to where Scout and Dampier was easily because he's going to get spotted by awards. And then if you kill an Ophelia, you make him... And it's creeps, of course. Then you're going to make him farm three creep waves or three creep camps, and that's denying a lot of farm for your team. Um, so I think that the way you should be playing Ophelia is just what Tinkerbell's doing. Is that he's farming his own jungle when he can, and he's going to push when his team is ready. But he shouldn't really be going at deep at all for kills. Um, the deepest he should be going is like the river. But 
past that, unless the rest of his team is with him, there's no reason for him to just make that risk because it's a high risk, high reward scenario for Ophelia. And mostly high risk, I mean, generally high risk, it's not a huge reward um, that you're going to get it from Ophelia unless your team is ready to push. But bottom line over here, ooh, Rally Ultimate actually going to be missing. Yeah. And Unfortunate. Super AKG is going to get away. Lodestone able to TP on out of there. Scout not in position to go for a pickoff. He's instead up in the top jungle trying to clear out those creep camps as best as possible as somebody was just sent to town. Looks like it was a torturer. Nice job. He would have otherwise been picked off by uh, Tempest and Bubbles right there. Bubbles showing up and could have easily dropped that kelp field. Yeah, I actually have the Lex Tally on this, and I feel like that item is really underrated. Um, and I, it's funny because I have never bought it, but... I think that it's a very good item, um, and it's it functions as something like a uh, like a blood chalice, like a bottle, except for supports. It gives you a bit of regen, it gives you a bit of armor, and it also weakens the enemy a lot. I mean, if you think of negative five armor and negative three magic armor early on is a lot. Um, it's definitely enough to be a huge factor when you're um, going to go for a kill. And at the same time, I mean, you're going to lower your own armor, but it doesn't matter. Supports are generally support. weak. And like you don't care if you die as long as you make that difference to get a kill on somebody who's more important than you. Um, that's just how support is. Mm -hmm. So I hope we see this item more often because I feel like it can um, do a lot more than people think. And it's undervalued. I, I think it's just completely ignored. I don't really feel like people just know that or think like, can I get a Lexus game? No, it's not. This is not a Lex game. I feel like it's just people are so used to. Well, forget about um, it. how. Yeah, people yeah, are just used to how old supporting is, and they just kind of forget about the item. I mean, you can get it on other roles as well, but I think it's most useful on support players. <laughs> Heroes. Yeah, Bubbles. Saw that top. Barely getting out of there, but yeah, I agree. Uh, Lex Talios, people forget about it. Middle lane, Wretched Hag going to go down. Luna going to get a red power throw off right here, but she still could be in some trouble. Dampier is going to activate the Energizer and try to maybe set something up. Tempest comes in. There's the Glacial Blast. Going to summon some minions, but gets stunned out here. And now might get taken out. Tempest is, in fact, going to go down. And uh, Lodestone not going to hit anything with his ultimate. The low armor gets him killed. Bubbles comes in with the silence. Are they going to be able to kill anybody? They get tortured, but they're going to lose a third player for it right now. Bubbles goes down. That's going to be a buyback on who just bought back. This is Tempest. But TG well played. You're coming out right here. And Lions going to choose to give this one up, Panny. One and one now between these two teams for scrims. Yeah. Um, it looked like a one game from 10 minutes in. Just, I really like the drafting from TMSR. Um, even though a lot of people disagree and think the TMSR has a lot of bad drafting as of lately. Um, I think that that game was very well drafted as well as very well laned, and it won them the game. I mean, they played, they played even better than than like an average team would, obviously because of Team SR. But if you were an average team with decent players, you still would have had a great game. Um, and obviously, they finished it that fast because they knew how their lineup worked out, and they applied a lot of aggression early game, knowing that if they win over the game, the game's over. So, well played by Team SR, and we'll see if they're going to be going re. I for game three. Certainly hope they do. Certainly hope they do, guys. But I uh, want to let you know what the schedule is here for today. Uh, we're going to be doing scrims pretty much as long as they last, which will, I would certainly hope, at least another uh, hour or two. Um, and as soon as we're done with that, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of the quarterfinals matches from Sound Blaster Heroes League Southeast Asia Qualifier number one. Uh, those matches did take place about five hours ago. So I'll be heading over to the Garena client and grabbing a couple of those replays so we can check out the progress in the, the Sound Blaster Heroes League SEA Qualifier number one. Tomorrow will be the semifinals for that match. And those are going to be the important ones, figuring out which two teams do qualify for Sound Blaster Heroes League Season 2 group stages. So we'll be taking a look at those a little bit later on today, ladies and gentlemen. For right now, though, we're going to take a quick break, get the next game set up. Panny, thanks for being here as always, buddy. If you uh, want to say anything to your fans at home, this is the time. Um, hey. 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 That's it. All right, guys. Hey. We'll be right back with more Cold Cast Presents Scrimcast Live with Beef and Panty. <laughs> 